Uh, hi everyone, welcome to our final panel. Um, you know, it's been a great week, and and and, it, and it's great to have finally have this uh, final panel on criticism and publishing. Uh, so I'm going to introduce some of our speakers. Um, the first of which is uh, it's not in order, but Simon and Jamie, who's here with us. Um, Simon and Jamie is a Paris-based curator, lecturer, art critic, and novelist. Um, and Jamie is the co-founder and editor-in-chief of Revue Noir, a journal of contemporary African art, and. Um, extra um, occidental art, I think that says. Um, he, uh, he has, I could be. Uh, he, ha he has served as um, artistic director of Bamako Photography Biennale for 10 years, uh, where he has collaborated with the EU in the implementation of the event. Uh, Simon has co-curated the African Pavilion at the, th uh, at the 52nd Venice Biennale in 2007, um, and has curated numerous exhibitions of contemporary African art um, and photography, including Africa Remix 2004 to 2007, um, and the African Art Fair um, held at the jo in Johannesburg in 2008. He is currently uh, directing the Pan-African Masterclasses in Photography, um, a project that he conceived with the Goethe Institute. Uh, then we have, uh, I mean, I'm going to try and get this right, uh, Dr. Bonaventure Son Beijing uh, Ndinkung, okay. <laughs> uh, PhD. Uh, uh, Bonaventure is an initiator, and, uh, is the initiator and editor-in-chief of the Savvy Journal of Contemporary African Art. Um, he is the founder and artistic director of the artistic space uh, Saving Contemporary in Berlin. Um, he has been curator of several international projects and published um, numerous catalogues. Uh, we then have with us Brandon Bell Roberts. Uh, Brandon Bell Roberts is the founder and publisher of Art South Africa magazine, uh, founder of director of Sustain Our Africa Summit and uh, the Change the Lab Behaviour, uh, Change in Communication Consultancy. Um, the Good Report Sustainability Reporting Platform um, and Baseboard um, and uh, Art Africa Books, um, a newly formed imprint of Art South Africa magazine in collaboration with Random House. Um, Art South Africa sees itself as a vehicle that celebrates um, Africa's uh, future present uh, while Sustain Our Africa, uh, SOE, is a collaborative sustainability and communications platform that intends to act as a catalyst for positive change. Uh, hosting this panel will be uh, Mark Rappolt. Mark Rappolt is the um, editor of Art Review. He was formerly editor of the AA Files, the Journal of the Architectural Association in London, uh, where he also taught... Um, his books and monographs include those of the architect uh, Frank Gehry, uh, Greg Lynn, and he has written catalogue texts uh, for exhibitions of um, Alex Katz, uh, Slater Bradley, Bahati Kerr, uh, David Cronenberg, Martin Cove, amongst others. So please welcome our distinguished panel. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for having us and for coming. Um, we thought we'd start this by each kind of introducing a little about the context from which we come as publishers and critics. Um, so to get the ball rolling, I'll say Art Review is a magazine that was founded in 1949. And in the early days, its ideas of, say, previewing the Venice Biennale would be to write about how we were going to teach the uh, lazy Italians something about art with our amazing show of constables. Um, since then, it's evolved a lot, I hope. <laughs> And um, it numbers a lot of artists amongst its writers. There's some Italians in the room. So <laughs> be careful. Yeah, we have changed, you know. We don't try to teach them anymore. <laughs> um, so it has a lot of artists writing for it, and it's starting from Matisse and going through to people like Thomas Daymond. Um, we also have now a sister publication, which is Art Review Asia, which is um, Asia in terms of its audience, not in terms of its coverage, um, because we've been having a lot of concerns about locality and regionality and preserving that in a kind of global art context. Um, and beyond that, um, we're privately funded, um, but also get most of our income through advertising, which is perhaps some of the relationships we might talk about later on, gallery advertising. Bonaventure, do you want to...? Yes, I might, might start. Um, I'm a bit surprised that I have to start because I actually am the, the youngest or the newest in this constellation, so, but I feel honored and thank you for inviting. Uh, basically, Savvy Journal started like three years ago, which was uh, a, a kind of a reactionary process, you know, based on the context in which we find ourselves. 
Uh, it was put up as a journal with a title for critical text on contemporary African art because based in, in Germany, we had the impression that um, there was something lacking about the criticality and the way uh, people write about African artists and the art from the continent. So um, basically, it's, you hardly see anything. You know, Once every five years when there's a documentary, you see a, fe a few features of some African artists or when there is a f f World Cup in South Africa and the right about Af South African art. So we thought that was just to, 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 to few opportunities to explore this very rich, this very diverse, this very this amazing, uh, this massive uh, body of works produced and interesting stuff. So we, we said we, we'll start somewhere. Um, and we just put a couple of people together and start to writing about the, contemporary African art. So um, to start, we, we, we tried to position the discourses, you know, so what are the current things? And I must say a couple of people in here and around were very helpful in this process, Simon especially, uh, in, 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 in trying to direct us, giving us a, the trajectory we could take, you know. So, um, so that's how we kicked off. So we've done five editions and we're working towards the sixth, uh, the sixth edition now. Uh, which is on contemporary African art and music, you know, artists that work in this in this junction in this in this threshold between music and and, and 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 art and fine art, you know. So we we work very topic oriented. We invite just a few people to 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 provide essays, you know, so pretty long stuff, and then just a f very very few like exhibition reviews, you know. So I think in the course of the talk we will see. Uh, what we, how critical we are, and if we even understand what criticality means. Yes. Uh, so we'll, we'll get in there bit by bit, but I don't want to take too much time. So I hope that was not too long. No, no, I'd have come over there if it was. Okay. <laughs> Brendan, do you want to? I'm just, <clears throat> just going to make sure my slides up. Yeah, I have no slides. Um, no, no, uh, we, we, we've been, I think, during, uh, I, I didn't attend all the, the talks, but uh, I think that one of the, the very question is that of contemporary African art, uh, which for me does not exist, that's the first thing. Secondly, um, the problem of the critic, I, I don't think that there's not such a thing as a critic today, uh, because I think that we've lost the sense of vocabulary. I agree with Hegel that uh, we think through the words we're using. And I think that we have a very poor vocabulary, which means that we don't think that much, which means that I'm not sure that we're able to have a critical gaze on what we're seeing. And I would add that we're even blind, because we can't recognize the signs. And, uh, and this uh, thing that they call global world that they're trying yeah. to sell us, we're just falling into the same traps than, than ever. And maybe that's one of the reasons why a, a young thing like Savi or uh, uh, art in South Africa might be interesting. Because I think that um, everything is about point of view and everything is about vocabulary. And I think that we need to reload the vocabulary. I mean, the best critic, my favorite critics are Guillaume Apollinaire or, uh, or Baudelaire. They're not art historians. Because what is an art historian? He's telling, he's telling us about art and history. And we're dealing with the contemporary. How could an historian deal with the contemporary? It's a history in making, in the making. And in order to tell a history in the making, one needs to be close to it, not uh, in some uh, offices, not by reading books, but by being out there. And I have the feeling that a lot of people are not going out there. Uh, they'd rather go in the usual suspect circus. Uh, I go to Basel, I go to Fries, I go to Fiac eventually. That's the second great thing. And uh, I go to Venice and I go to Kassel and I think that I know it all about the <coughs> global world. Well, and of course, it's always one point of view uh, because we still, I think, and I, and I stop there for the moment, we, we still uh, under the, the curse of the century of the Enlightenment mm -hmm. at the time where we, they were defining um, universality. And when universality was just divided into France, Germany, Italy, even Spain wouldn't enter there. And I think that 
nowadays when people are talking about globality or globalization, etc., they may be talking about London, New York, and in a lesser extent, Paris. Mm. And I think that it's, uh, it's critical to, to know what we're talking about when we're talking about it. We'll come back to a lot of those points. Um, but Brendan, do you want to yeah, introduce I, yourself? <clears throat> I've taken out of the talks this week a lot of the, the issues around labelling. I think what you, you're touching on there you know, <coughs> certainly deals with that. Um, and just sort of, it's quite... Uh, Quite a lot of things up there, I know, but uh, I don't really separate the work that I do with Art South Africa from, you know, the two platforms, the Change Agent and Sustain Africa. Sustain Africa is, uh, we ran our first uh, biennial event summit last year with 100 um, speakers from all over the world, and that platform's about um, sort of preparing Africa to create an Africa by Africans for Africa. You know, <coughs> the, the outcome of that is sort of enough for all forever for those people that are actually on the continent. Um, big lofty ideas, I know, but uh, basically uh, we're very, very well positioned in, in the innovation technology and the digital space, so that's what we've been working in the past year towards bringing to the Art South Africa platform. And I think, you know, as we all know, you can be in Cape Town, but what's happening on the west and east coast of Africa too, it's, it could be anywhere in the world. It's a very, very large continent to traverse and to bring everybody together, you know, we're trying to do it the best way we know how, and that's through through technology and innovation in the technology space. Um, we launched our new website um, a couple of weeks ago, and, and one of the things that we've built into the new platform is a, is a Facebook-like platform which will allow African galleries, institutions, organisations, and other events to, to basically engage with that platform, um, put their events up, and then for us to basically use Art South Africa as, a, as an international marketing platform to try and get what the rest of the continent is doing out there to the, to the rest of the world. Um, that's the Art South Africa uh, media platform at this stage, the way it stands. We have a quarterly print publication. Uh, we've now gone to a monthly uh, digital sort of publication for iPad and Android and Apple platforms. Uh, we're academically accredited. Um, so we have a separate journal that, that, that clicks out of the, the current site for that to deal with academic content. We have a weekly newsletter. We have a new press release service for, for galleries and members who join the, the network. <coughs> An e-commerce platform has been built so um, galleries, artists can sell their, their publications, magazines, books, even art if they, if they wish. Um, we also have, with our communications uh, platform a lot of services to offer, so we do video production, web development, all kinds of stuff, and then social media is, is pretty active. So I come less, for, less so from the clever side you guys do and uh, more from the communication side. And uh, we're, we're, we're playing with the, the move as well from an Art South Africa branding to an Art Africa pretty soon, hopefully. That's it. Great. Well, um, maybe a good place to start is... Um, with the kind of effects of online publishing and social media. And certainly in the UK, with a lot of newspapers, you're noticing they're very much propagating the idea that everyone can comment, everyone can be a critic, and everyone's opinion is equally valid without any particular ideas of speciality or attention to facts and details. Um, do you think that's something that's changing the role of the critic? Can everyone be a critic, or is the critic a specialist trade? Everybody can be critical, and I know a lot of critics who are not uh, really critics. And that, that, there's a quote by, um, I think it was Dirty Harry in Dirty Harry number four or something, uh, that a friend of mine, David Elliott, quoted once. And uh, I think Dirty Harry was saying, opinion are like my mother would not uh, allow me to use the word, but you know, yeah. everybody has one. But uh, now, uh, how do we apply those opinion to, to certain tools? I mean, um, a smith could come to me and do anything, and I couldn't say anything about it because I'm not able to, I'm not qualified. Uh, now, who's qualified and who defines the qualification? And as far as this uh, digital revolution is concerned, um, 
uh, I'm going every now and then in, in, in Africa. And uh, to download uh, an image might take me in places a couple of hours when there's no electricity break, etc., etc. Not everyone has a computer at home, etc. So it, it's another illusion, this kind of um, uh, democratization of things. Things are not democratic. Art is an elite thing. Now, the point is, how do we um, uh, convey it to, to the greatest <coughs> amount of people possible? We're talking about Africa, but if you make a show on Van Gogh in France or anywhere, there'll be a line for three, four, seven yeah. months. If you make a show of contemporary art, if you, if you make your balance for one month. So it's not about Africa, it's about contemporary yeah. and contemporary art. And I think that uh, we need to define, you know, I love the words, we need to define what we're talking about. I'm assured that what you're saying, a critic, you're meaning the same thing than me. I'm sure that when you're saying contemporary art, you're saying the same thing than me. When you're saying Africa, are you talking about the same thing? I don't know. I think uh, not everybody can be a critic. I think it's a, it's a, um, th there are a, a couple of givens that have to be assumed, yeah. you know. And these givens are historic, contextual, you know. A couple of things. So, of course, if you're a physician, you might be a, crit a critic in, in, in medical matters, but you don't necessarily have to be a critic on, 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 on artistic matters. But if you assume the context, the, the historical context, you know, the social context, and you understand that, and I'm, and I'm talking about, you know, uh, this, this whole idea of the hermeneutic circle, you, yeah. know, uh, you know, bringing in Heidegger into the, into the game, you know. So, Understanding the part to make the whole, understanding the whole to, to understand a part of it, you know. So you cannot really write to understand a text, you know, to understand a piece of art, you must understand who the artist is, where the artist comes from, what is the contextual base of where the artist comes from, you know, yeah. what are the impulses that create this piece, you know. So I think then, if you assume this, then you can be a critic, but not everybody can do that, yeah. you know. So talking about the democratization as well. Then back to the internet issue. Uh, when we started off, it was very clear we didn't want to do a print journal mm -hmm. uh, because, we, first of all, we couldn't afford for it. Second of all, because it was it was uh, a process. We wanted to do kind of an open source thing, you know, for everybody to be able to read it, but not for everybody to be able to write on it. You yeah. know, so it was very clear at, at the beginning. So the idea was for somebody to say, even if the internet is very slow, but somebody can sit in a, in a telecafe in Douala and read something about art. Why not? You know, contrary to my time when I was 17 years old, hanging around the corner and had the interest in reading something about art, I couldn't afford for, for an NKA or, 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 or a Revue Noir. I couldn't yeah. afford for it. You know? But the thing now is somebody can sit there. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what you say now. So in any case, but somebody there has the possibility to sit in Australia and has the interest in, 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 in it will talk about Africa or, or not Africa, but has yeah. the interest in, in, in contemporary Africa now and can sit there and really just put up the journal and read it, you know, yeah. so the open source. And for you, is how does kind of a critical or opinion-based writing sit alongside well, a platform <laughs> where galleries might be essentially promoting... Well, I, th I think that <clears throat> even though it looks like a platform that all of a sudden everybody can throw their two cents worth into it, it's not, it's not the case at all. You know, we'll still be very, very selective about which voices actually do drive the conversations on the platform. You know, the, the more social spaces on the platform are places where all the galleries and, and, and people who follow the artists and their communities can comment, but that's kept in a very separate place to where the, you know, the real right. critical... And how do you do the selection? Well, it's still, still ultimately by our editors, um, who are our editor, Ashraf Jamal, and uh, working in the way we always have with our, with our publication to date. You know, we've got a very, very sort of selective way in which who the writers are, you know, they have a pedigree, they have written before, they are, you know, they are out there. Yeah. There's a suggestion in the sort of description of the talk that... Um, Criticality is related to theoretical validation of artworks. Is that something you think is the case? That part of the role is to validate things? 
I think that what is validating artworks is not for ourselves, it's the market. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you buy, you validate it. You go in an auction and you sold for one million, you validate it. Uh, but just a chain. Uh, you, you have the commercial galleries, you have the writers, you have the quote unquote not, non commercial um, events. Yeah. Even if one would wonder if Venice, for instance, is still a non commercial event. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is another debate, and everybody is doing his job. And, um, but at the end of the day, the, um, the, the, the ultimate uh, sensor is, is the market. But of course, when we're talking about some places in the world, it, it might be different. I was in Castle, sitting in Castle once, and there were those two lovely ladies who were there. Was there, there. And I was having a drink with Santum of Kang, with whom I'm sure you're very familiar. And uh, one of them made a mistake. She didn't know Santum that much, and she, she, they were walking our direction, and the lady said, oh, let me introduce you to this marvelous photographer I discovered, and Santu heard that, and he, he didn't even address her, he was talking to me, he said, Simon, you heard the bitch? <laughs> I'm 55 years old and she discovered me? <laughs> uh, it's like Ella Natsui, who was discovered, a guy who's been working for 40 years, yeah. he was discovered when he was 60. Yeah. And who's discovering who? Who's, 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 who's fucking with who? Excuse my F word. Um, but the, the term of validation is just that you have places that are working like, um, um, like, like the World Bank. You, you go to Venice, you have a chance to be seen, and then you have a lazy critic who might write about you because the lazy critic did not know about you before. And he might write some stupid things because he doesn't know where you're coming from and why you're doing what you're yeah. doing. And that's why, to quote him again, refuses interview with so-called specialists anymore. And when I asked him why, he said, I'm sick of listening to the same stupid questions yeah. uh, that are not related to the work but to the continent. Yeah. And people will present him, for instance, as a Nigerian artist when he's Ghanaian. Yeah. And this is an easy thing to know. And uh, one other thing, thanks to BC Silva and colleagues, is that during the, the last Venice Biennale, um, there was a bunch of people who had to buy a map of Africa because they didn't know where to place Angola. Yeah. And all of a sudden, they say, Angola has the golden lion. I say, Angola what? Angola, where, where's that? Where's that? And these are the same people who are talking about being global, being international, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So I think that the validation is just a, a matter of an accident. That, that's why it's important for some people, uh, some regions in the world, to create their own tools. Yeah. As long as the validation will be taking place in certain parts of the world, it will be uh, criticized or it will be um, integrated, to use that beautiful, ugly word, yeah. according to certain terms. I remember moments where um, brilliant uh, European critiques wanted to define Africa and African artists. And... Uh, I might look sound rough, but I shall not give the name of the person I'm, oh I'm going to. <laughs> yeah, because I, I have a human heart. So I'm somewhere in Africa, and this person who's looking for some good artist asked me, well, Simon, I don't know much about it, and gave him three names. And later on, I bump into him again, and I say, so? And he said, you didn't tell me that they attended college in an art school. <laughs> I said, what? I said, well, they're not authentic anymore. Yeah. So these are the kind of things you guys might use when you say Africa, uh, not knowing what, what you're dealing with. It's just a dark continent, and there's no such thing as uh, Africa. I'm not an African. Yeah. I'm a Bassa from Cameroon. Do you know what a Bassa is? No. no. So I cannot comment on my novels. Even. <laughs> but isn't that quite... Um if on the one hand we're at an event that's designed to kind of promote art from, an Afri from Africa, um, aren't you making it quite exclusive? Well, I mean, the world has been exclusive. Exclusive means elite. And I think that the Africans should select who they're dealing with, yeah. I mean, as the others. <laughs> 
I say, you're not qualified. You know, there was a moment where a, a guy who was running a restaurant in Belgium was blonde and blue-eyed, would come to Africa and tell to some Africans, show, show me your work, blah, 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 I'm going to exhibit you, and we'll exhibit him in some kitchens. And, and I saw a shift there when a great curator from the West, let's say, uh, I was visiting a friend's studio, and the guy was there asking to the artist, what have you done, or right? can I see your work, your CV? <coughs> At the end of that first part, and of course the curator, critic, whatever, thought that the conversation was over. At the end of the first part, that critic, curator, said, okay, I, I want you in my show. And the artist said, sorry, we're not done yet. Now, what have you done? Who are you, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And at the end of the conversation, I said, I'm sorry, I don't want to be in your show. <laughs> so uh, the criticality is, uh, is a formal instrument when it's written. And I think that any decent artist is, is producing critique, is producing criticality. And uh, to think that it's, um, it's a specialized field uh, given to specialists is, is, is just the best way to, to keep it into... Uh, a kind of a very uh, unhealthy uh, mode yeah. where um, our internalism uh, is that we meet in Basel, we meet in Venice, we meet now we go uh, to, to Kwanju because it's, it's exotic, we go to Istanbul and that's how we think we're inter international. So I think that, um, that there's something rotten in the world of art and that uh, maybe those voices from outside could teach this old um, system that's not functioning anymore how to function, how to open up, how to address real issues. Yeah. Because I think that everything is, is led by the market right yeah. now, and uh, we should not fool ourselves. I, mean, I know critics who are writing for money to validate something. Yeah. What kind of validation is that? Bonaventure. Do you think that, that um, I mean, that one of the roles of the critical positions in art is to bring, oh dear, <laughs> is to bring... Um, the parties after. <laughs> is, is to bring in almost other discourses, politics, the things that a fair, for instance, might exclude, or should things like politics, economics, sociological discourse, be separate from art criticism? Why should they be separate from that? I think they're part and parcel of the society. As, as I said, uh, you know, being critical is understanding also. It's, it's, it's seeking to, to understand, to make some meaning out of works. Yeah. I think that is what cr being critical means to me. You know, so you, why should these sociological issues or, or economic or political be excluded? I think they're part and parcel of the society. We cannot make ourselves islands. You know, art is just, just amongst many other things. Yeah. You know, and as, as exclusive as it might seem to be, it's just a small part of the whole. So I think, uh, just to answer your question straightforward, I think we should open up, you know, look beyond the, the horizon of just the artistic practice, you know, look into the sociological and philosophical things. Yeah. yeah. And does that, how does that enter into your... Well, <clears throat> from the Sustain Our Africa um, events point of view and what we do, you know, we, we look at uh, in sustainability at environmental, social, cultural, all those things are, are part of a whole. I don't think you can, you can look at, and I think a lot of people in, in sort of the art market look at that as that's the art market and then there's everything else. And um, unfortunately, we're part of a, an ecosystem and you can't ignore you know, the financial aspects of the art world, you know, driven by people who are making a lot of money out of mining and natural gas on the continent and taking all the resources out of Africa because there's 70% of the world's resources left on the continent. And, you know, the, those that plundered elsewhere will now come and do it there and there will be a lot more money in Africa. And, you know, this was touched on early on in the week in some of the, the talks and, uh, you know, even uh, some said, well, if the money's there, do we take it or don't we take it? No, well, we take it because if we don't take it, who's going to take it? <laughs> you know, all, all of these, these issues are, are floating in the, in, the, in the universe, but uh, there's no single answer, I don't think, and yeah. there's no single way of doing it. I think 
You've got you've got to do it from from your point of view, and hopefully for the right reasons, and 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 that it's doing the right thing. And you know, we try and push that uh, you know stuff for positive change. You know, we are trying to build a network so that African artists and and other organisations can hopefully grow their businesses and, and expose it to to other markets. But you know, that brings the whole money thing in again, and then. Who do you work with, and who pays for the advertising, and uh, you know how do those models work? And then people with money come again, and they want to control it. So you, you constantly, I think, trying to push the money away, but you you have to take it too, otherwise, you know, you don't have a livelihood. Yeah. And is that something that you face a lot in terms of sort of where your living is coming from? Well, I face a lot of things. I mean, uh, I. Uh, I like to drink champagne, and I I don't like to take tubes, so I have a, quite a heavy budget on cabs and so on. I am a frequent flyer, so the plane, etc. That money must come from somewhere. Uh, so uh, the the point is just to to decide from whom that money would come. There, there, there's there's some money. I know that people say that or pretend that money doesn't smell. But there's some money that smells very, very heavily, yes. and um, I have a too fine nose to work with them. And there's some money that is quite okay. That you know, stinks a bit less. So I, I, I can deal with that. But that, that's why I was saying yeah, earlier is that uh, uh, we, we cannot talk about art like this as if we were in the middle of an island and we, we were innocent. We know that art is market driven. We know that there's a need for money. We know that the Tate is sponsored uh, by some Nigerian bank, etc. It's not the point. My very point is how come a Nigerian bank doesn't finance a contemporary art museum in Lagos? Yes. Because there's none. I don't care about them giving money to Tate. After all, it's their money. Yeah. They made it. Don't know how. This is not a debate. <laughs> uh, but the, the, the point is that there's a story. There are stories to be told. And uh, there are many voices, many languages yeah. uh, under which those stories should be told in, in order for us to, to grasp a bit of what the world means. Uh, when a Japanese writes in Japan, in Japanese, it means something. When it's translated, it's already something else. So how do we manage to have a kind of, a, of an heterologos? Yeah. I mean, how, how do we manage to have a, a plurality in different languages and not translations? Because traduttore, uh, traditore. Any translation is losing something from, from the original. So how do we manage to create a kind of polysemic uh, world of languages and not thinking that that one should be superior to, to the other one? And that's the only way you can understand, and that's the only way you can tell a story. You cannot tell a story if you don't have a setting, if you don't have characters, if you don't have a, a script. And this script is made out of history, it's made out of politics, it's made out of economy. And how can you then write about something you don't know at all? You cannot just take the piece of art out of the blue and say, I'm going to write about it. You need to know where it's coming from. And of course, uh, on the other hand, uh, if you're unable to see the work, uh, I've seen some people shitting. They see a work by a mammalian, they, they don't know what to say with it, and they wrote a piece about Mali <laughs> with a bunch of mistakes because they could not address the work because they don't realize that um, uh, somebody said that at the beginning was the word. I would say at the beginning is the thing. The thing is there, it exists. Let's call it the art piece. Yes. It's there. And then it's, uh, it's polysemic. Different people looking at it will look at it through different gazes because they are formed, uh, their mentality, their intelligence, their gaze is informed by their culture. Uh, uh, two brothers watching the same, two twin brothers watching the same piece will have a different opinion then uh, an opinion is one thing, then how do we decipher what the work wants to say? And at times we might see things there that the artist did not see. Yeah. And the point is not to see what the artist saw. Because when the artist who work in the solitude of his studio, he's confronted with different things. When it's out there, it becomes, it, it becomes a bit more open. And I mean, and the critic, if 
uh, since we have to use that word, is somebody who can see and then who has the tool to decipher the thing and to tell us the story the thing is trying to say. And there's no such thing as goodness or badness. Uh, these are lazy words for lazy people. Uh, you look at something and you say it makes sense or it doesn't make sense. But then how do you qualify to say that something makes sense or not? Yeah. Within that, do you think that anyone could create the story for an object? I mean, in some ways there's a story that the artist might have of that object and then an art historian may intend to transmit the story the artist had in relation to that object, whereas someone else may just stumble across it and have a, a story that's only connected with a single experience. Are all those stories valid? The other stories are definitely valid. There is an extension of the, of the story the artist might have wanted to tell. There might be uh, the, I don't want to use the word discovery, but the, 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 encounter. the encounter of a new trajectory. Yeah. You know, the, 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 there are different possibilities, you know. So, but, but I think it's also a matter of referencing. And as, as, as Simon talked about, these historical issues and so on and so forth. Um, it's, it's about where you position yourself as, as the, the writer or the critical, or whoever you, you, you might want to be. Um, <clears throat> it's just like, uh, to pose an example, uh, you, 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 you have the, 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 the task to write about an artist, say, from, from, from Cameroon or from, from, from wherever, but because you lack uh, these references, then you go start quoting, this is the, 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 the Cameroonian uh, whatever... Uh, <laughs> the, the, the Cameroonian Warhol, yeah. you know, or the Cameroonian, uh, you know, although you can look into his, 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 his context, into his history, to look for references from there, you know. And, and it's also, it's, that it's also the, the, the point of, of um, like to, to give you the example of, of abstraction, yeah. you know, and I was talking, uh, I think, with, with Edson about, about that. Um, and so, so if, you, if you kind of reference this African artist, or, or say somebody like Givewit, or whoever, you know, you reference him to some, some American artist that he, he, he might have or might not have uh, uh, had an influence from. But if you look into his history, into his society, you look back a few hundred years, you know, there's a very long history of abstraction in that. You know. So why should he necessarily be... be uh, be, to compare, yes, you know, or, or getting that from, from, from the American artist. Maybe he is just following a line, you know. There, of course, it's not a linear yeah. genealogy, but he might be just getting an influence from things that are found in his society. The, it, it, so I'm, I'm talking about so epistemology, you know, yeah. in, in, as basic as that, you know, in society, you know, epistemic things as well, you know, the knowledge you get from, from material, you know, and this is things we grow up with, you see them, and you, you, you just follow up in that line. Yeah. So. An encounter with an artwork is also about that kind of epistemology, but also about the experiences that I bring to it, let's say, when I see it, and sure. they're my references, and For when sure. I write, mm -hmm. I can choose how much I want to talk about myself. Yes and how much I want to talk about the work. And, and those two things... Depends how interesting is yourself. <laughs> yeah, well, that's where the market decides. <laughs> um, but there are these, you know, and I think there's sometimes a conflict between mm -hmm. the two things, because both in some ways are exclusive. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a conflict. It's um, there's an in-between. There's always an in-between where lies the misunderstanding. As, we, as long as we acknowledge the misunderstanding, we can become efficient. When we don't acknowledge the misunderstanding, we can't. So there's you, there's the object, and then there's, there's that space in between. And everything is taking place. And that's the battlefield, the place in between. How do we fill it? And of course, part of us is filling that space in between. Part of the work is filling that space. Part of the artist's intention is filling that space. But this encounter is creating a third narrative. Yeah. And, and the third narrative is what is interesting. I mean, artists are not the best people always to tell about what they wanted to say. Critics are not the best people always to tell about the artist wanted to say, etc., etc. Which means that there's, a, 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 again, a polysemy of meanings and a work can only live 
I mean, I made a... Again, I, I do terrible things, but I don't do it on purpose. I mean, I was good-hearted. Uh, there was this lady who was married with an artist. She thought he was the greatest in the world. And I was giving a lecture, and then she raised her head and said, I only said, Jamie, how come you... Basically, she was saying, you, you didn't pick up my husband, who's a great artist. And my answer was that uh, uh, the greatest artist that I don't know does not exist. <laughs> because it doesn't come to my consciousness. How could I talk about something I don't know? Um, so the, the space in between, you, you, you need the encounter of, of the object to be able to talk about it. And, uh, and we, we, we should not focus about um, the object as something closed, as something completely definite. Mm. Because when it goes out of the, 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 the studio, of the artist's studio, it, it takes on another life. And uh, we, 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 we don't have to respect the work if we want to be uh, real, really critical. We have to, to decipher it and to give it another, another life. Because we know it's all fiction. So how good a fiction we can write about it is, is what matters. If I go in a movie and things that are happening are not credible, um, I, I won't buy it. But if you do your job, you might know that uh, this is happening in Cameroon, this is happening, uh, and then you can base your fiction on, on reality, on material. We call that research. Exactly. And I think, uh, just to add something on it, uh, I think this point of encounter, you know, of course you can bring your references, and they're very important as well, you know. But um, there's this short and beautiful article by, by Iri Drogov about, about critic, uh, criticism and criticality. And I think, and what she says about criticality, I find very interesting. It's, it's about this learning process, you know. So it, it, this point of encounter is a point of learning, you know. So, so if you don't go the extra mile, then you're just fucking lazy, yeah. you know. And I think that is the matter. That is the, that is the, that, that is the issue at stake, you know. So this point of encounter is what we can learn from each other. You know, and as, 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 if not, it's not worth the trouble. Is it education? Yeah, I mean, what I wanted to just add to that was that I think all this criticality and everything that happens ultimately ends up in the archive. So the archive is kind of what everybody is contributing towards, and 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 you know you, the kind of conversations you might be having today, and the conversations they'll have around this subject in 50 years' time, might then be driven by market demand for that artist's work again, and come back to the whole issue, you know, how it's set in history and where it sits now. So, you know, the conversation also continues a lot longer after this conversation too. Of course. So. And they started before. Yeah. <laughs> and then they start again. <laughs> um, at this point, if anyone's got questions from the audience, you should be, feel free to um, start chipping in. Um, if you raise a hand, I think there's some microphones <coughs> going round. One at the front, two at the front, three. Who's that? Still. I was so ready to get my man. Don't be shy. You won't have a second chance. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be off on your car. <laughs> Hello, my name is Sally Mata Diop. Uh, just a question not about your role as a writer, but more about publisher. Um, as the market has been evolving, uh, how has it been changing? Do you have more and more, uh, is it more and more difficult to select <coughs> essays or is, is there a great amount of, of essays and articles and more and more writers interesting in that field or not? Or? Could you introduce you? Are you a writer yourself? I'm not. I'm starting a career as a curator, and I will we'll see what happens. <laughs> but I'm going on the field. Good. Monsieur Bonaventure. Uh, uh, well, my experience is that uh, there are less and less writers. So, um, less and less interesting writers. There are a lot of writers, but to my opinion, there's less interesting writers. And the field is become... So it's, it's difficult to talk about the publishing issue because we, we're an online journal. You know, we, do, we do only 50 copies in print and just for, for libraries and, and stuff like that. So um, the, the, the most important thing for us is the, is the content. And uh, we try... 
um, to, 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 to put this on a sieve, uh, sift, uh, sifting process. And my, unfortunately, I have the impression that it's, 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 it's not getting better. Sorry. My name is Hassan Ali. I'm, I'm a painter. I uh, just wanted to know um, how critical is criticality, and is it an academic or intellectual substantiation of the art for the artist? How is contemporaneity, contemporaneity, criticality? How is Africanity, contemporaneity? I mean, everything is in everything. I mean, if you're a painter, you should be more busy painting instead of <laughs> asking, asking our, our, our criticality is critical. Uh, no, I think, to, 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 to give it one second, I think that uh, it came from art historians. It was a hold-up. They hijacked the field. And I was saying the first one were poets, Baudelaire, Apollinaire, and so on and so forth. And uh, there was no need to have... Uh, an academia background to have the right to write. You needed to have eyes, to have a heart, and to have a, a good hand, a good talent to write. Uh, because the writer might be a seer. And then when it becomes, like for some curators, when it just become an academic matter, first of all, it becomes boring. And secondly, it, it misses a lot of things. Because if you train with references, how do you do when you when you see something that is not in your books. I mean, Picasso, Picasso's gaze was critical because in his school there was no Dogon mask, there was no Bowley mask. But he saw it and he said, oh, I've been fooled by my education. And nobody wrote at that time anything about those things. The artist would see something else than whatever art historian would see because it was not even in the field of their studies. So... Uh, don't confuse the high jack, jacking uh, <laughs> by certain type of people of criticality. Everybody can be, again, critical. Not everybody can write about it and can decipher it. But then you don't need to be an academician uh, to, to be able to do it, because I know a bunch of doctors who are just unable to write a proper sentence. <laughs> <laughs> question for you, uh, Simon, and this is also why we've invited you here. Uh, it will be quite interesting, I think, for, for the audience to, to hear a little bit more about the trajectory of Revue Noir, because talking validation and criticism, I mean, this is one of the early magazines that was set out to established contemporary African art in the early 90s, late 80s, and that has done so in a kind of encyclopedic manner. And, uh, and the, the journal has stopped uh, a few years ago. This is one thing that I would like you to address. And also, I would like you talking criticism and criticality. How do you see the educational turn and how uh, the the um, uh, social sciences and uh, political sciences have totally overtaken and and uh, uh, transform curatorial practice to the extent that uh, uh, as you say curators or writing curators or the uh, gaining power through writing has a sort of eclipse the traditional role of an art critic as, as, a, as such. How do, you, how do you explain that? How do you uh, experience it as a, as a critic? Because people forget that you're a novelist and not really a curator. You're a sniper curator. So uh, <laughs> in that sense... That's a compliment. I, I think that uh, when we talk about writing, you're really among the many curators evolving within this sphere of contemporary African art, uh, the writer among them. 
what you... Oh, it, which is uh, as lovely as that, because uh, you always ask uh, two short questions. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess we have four hours, so bear with me. I'll try to make it shorter. Uh, we'll start with the, the, the second part of the question. Um, when uh, Bonaventure... The dandy Bonaventure. I love his bow tie. I hope I can, <laughs> I can enter some club with this guy's thing. Um, when I was saying that, there's less and less uh, writing. Um, th there's a term uh, in Cameroon that is called gromology, gromology which means uh, uh, the use of big words, but big empty words. It's like criticality, the criticism of criticality, things like that. So people will fill their pages with a lot of terms, and at times when you ask them what they mean, they lost themselves. But then they sound intelligent, they look intelligent. And uh, there was a period, if we're talking about Africa and the otherness, there was a period where it was the, the realm of anthropology and et ethnology, the science of otherness. Those are the people who were working on what was not European. And then sociology and all those new uh, human sciences came to the fore. We started to talk about so society, we started to talk about uh, inequality, we started to talk about a lot of things as if we were I say we because I want to, to put myself into that, even if I don't do that. But it, as if we were unable, again, to address the real issues. So it's always easy to talk about something that is a bit aside than to address the, the real subject when, when you don't know it. And it's very fashionable now to have all those cross-examinations. You, you have to be... A, a, multi-talented, uh, but uh, very few of those writers have been writing novels, which is very important, or philosophy. And, uh, and I think that even in their practices, um, thanks to new technology, they're using cut and, and, and copy uh, technique. So they're lining up a couple of names there are quotes you need to make, there are references you need to have, and you'll find them in all of them. If you don't have it, you're not a member of the club. But what does it mean? Who have read one book of which is, is quoting a part? So we have this uh, sociological blah, 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 political blah, blah, blah. That doesn't mean anything anymore because it's not addressing anything. And, and of course, it created a shift. Now, people who are like, I cannot write uh, art for art's sake, I have to take care, I have to take into account all the diverse aspects of it. But there's one thing to take the other um, aspects of it into account. There's another thing to forget at some point, to be lost by your old diversity and to forget the, your, your target point. And I think that this is why we, we're having a lot of, uh, of uh, blah, blah, blah aces going on and that are always uh, targeting all these uh, kind of issues. Even the, 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 the big shows now, you, you will not have a show that's not referring to archives or to encyclopedia or to this and that. I mean, we're living in a fashion, and I think we're all fashion victims, and some more than others. Um, as far as Revue Noir is concerned, we, we, we started Revue Noir because, um, because I, I, I was living in Paris, and... Uh, and I have friends who are into the field, and, and we're talking every now and then, and, and then I would say, you see, Sam, and the, the Africans, it's, it's something strange. They, they, they had the mass, they have, they have, they have no contemporaneity. And, uh, and one day I just realized that the, those guys were not seeing me, because I was not African, I was their friends. And, uh, and I started to think about what, what, what does that mean. Uh, I would go to Africa and see so many things <laughs> happening that maybe a museum would not take at that time. And even the milieu, the local milieu, would not take because everybody is kind of imitating the other. Uh, I remember the, the art milieu in the mid-'80s in, in Cameroon. <coughs> it, was, it was so ridiculous. Oh, he's a master and his people. Anyway, um, we, we, we decided with a bunch of friends that I've met, one, two in particular, uh, just to show, to prove those people who are telling me nothing existing, to prove them wrong. 
in other words, to teach them, to, to bring a, a, a bit of diversity there. We, we didn't mean to create a market. We didn't mean to... We wanted to fight. That is uh, something interesting. Interesting. Wanted to fight the institutions. Because, well, like, institutions are bullshit. They're creating schools. They're creating norms. We became one. Yeah. That's one of the reasons why we stopped, because it's difficult to shoot yourself. Uh, so we, we, we just wanted to show that things were happening there. And if you look at it, we didn't want to be critical in the sense the academia called it. We wanted to tell stories, because our point of view was that we don't know what we're talking about. We don't know what we're dealing with. So we're taking what we're seeing, what we like, and we're trying to... Uh, to make something out of it. But uh, since all those people are talking about diversity, integration, are super lazy, in 91, when the first issue of Renoir came out, I was in Germany, a round table, and there was uh, uh, Mr. Jan Hut, who was then the artistic director of the uh, Castle Documenta, and he was telling his uh, Tanta o Congo story, or uh, the heart of darkness. I came back from Africa to make a tour, try to pick up artists. There's nothing there. The schools are messy. Blah, 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 blah. At that time, I was young and a bit angry, and I think I insulted him. And, uh, and I offered him uh, this first issue of the magazine. <coughs> and a couple of months later, he called uh, us to, to, to find the, the details of, uh, of Usman So whom he didn't see where, where he was there. So it, it was really not to... It was personal. I think that uh, anything I do is personal. Uh, as Koyo mentioned it, I'm, I'm a writer. Uh, I, I'm a, a writer who makes a show every now and then. But since the world is what it is, uh, I make a lot of shows because nobody's doing them. <laughs> but, uh, but every show is a story. And, uh, and the story of Alvin Wise is also a story. It's just a bunch of friends who said, we need to see what we don't see. And then finally, if people want it, fine. And I think that this is the, the limit between being market-driven and being honest, yeah. whatever that means. It's like you propose your meal. People like it, fine. Even better if they like it a lot. They don't like it, fine too. Because you're not doing it to please them. You're doing it for some other purposes. And if you have the luck to be at the right time, at the right moment, at the right place, then it might work. But if you're doing it in order to please some audience or in order to create a market, then you, you, you'll be probably uh, falling. So, so that, that, that's the thing. It's always uh, driven by, by something, by a story to be told. I'm trying to now. I would say you should stop talking. <laughs> 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 you see, and, and yet she was raising her hand. Hi, sorry. <laughs> oh, hi, sorry. Uh, my name is Samantha Bolton, and I was living in Nairobi, and I have a lot of friends uh, who are artists. I just wanted to say, I was um, pleased, one comment, and one short comment, and one question. The comment is that, you know, when I listen to you all and when you read or you go to Art Basel or, you know, the Freeze and you look at the Africa stand, I'm not talking about here, but, you know, in the big ones, it's almost like, oh, these are what Europeans want to see or this is some, can, some kind of little trend that might work here. And when you're living or, you know, in Nairobi or, you, you know, you're talking to gallerists from Kanu State in northern Nigeria or you go to Haifa in Harare, it is absolutely nothing to do with what any of you are talking about. Anything that we see in Freeze, it's irrelevant. And, you know, it's like an elitist gobbledygook, which is nice for the Salon de Paris, de Douale, or whatever. But when you're actually in Nairobi, yes, it may not be, you know, millions and millions like Jeff Kuhn, but there's a whole value and a whole market out there that people are buying, they love it. It's like the business people, they know it. You know, Kirakawa, whatever. And they may not be in your elitist little things up there, but they have a huge value in Kenya. Or, you know, when you talk to the guys, the galleries in um, Kanu, they'll tell you this is what people like here. This is what's cool. You look at some, I look at some of them in the critics. Oh, you know, he's a, I don't know what, tribalist. And they write it off because it's not part of some new trend. But so what I was wondering is, you know, surely instead of what's more valuable than up, you know, up whatever critique, 
is that some rich businessman, you know, like the guy who runs Safaricom, actually starts buying certain bits of art because he's living in Nairobi, he appreciates it, and all his rich friends come to dinner, look at it. That's what's going to get the value of the market up, is these rich guys collecting it, not you guys sitting there talking about stuff in Paris and in Berlin. <laughs> Uh, I, I would like to say something about that, if you don't mind. Can, yeah. can, we, can we take one, one voice here? I uh, think I need to answer that question, uh, <laughs> which, is, which is not a question, and I'll be very brief. Uh, you take, which is very interesting, the fact that you spend some time in Nairobi as a, as a how could I say, a goal that makes you're a specialist of at least... No, no, you're saying... I heard you. Listen to me. First of all, it, it's very nice to be filled with good intentions. That's lovely. Hell is paved with good intentions. <laughs> uh, we're talking about what is happening here in Frizz. We're not, we are not talking about the market that is happening there, first of all. Secondly, uh, we said, I think that the market... I think I said that, that the market, which means the buyer, is, is what is going to make the things happen. Uh, so if when I say the market, you understand something, it's because you should do it. You should free your mind, because what you're saying is just contrary to what I was saying. Because when I'm talking about the market, there's a market in Nairobi, there's a market in Senegal, etc. We can talk about that. But if I say the market and you understand that I'm not talking also about that market, it means that you have issues. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. No, it's a, it's a point. And, and I would like to add on to that, that actually there is there's also space for everybody, you know. So there is space for the, for the safari guy to buy his works. There is also space for the person who wants to write about it. You know, and I, I don't see uh, the antagonism in that. I don't see anything, contra I don't see any contradiction in it. So we might sit here and talk about uh, what is happening in Berlin or in Yaoundé and so on and so forth. But those are essential things that are happening. It's just a, a part of the storytelling, you know. So, uh, so I, I like to give this example again of, of, of uh, this, this brilliant review that was in Cameroon in the 60s, you know, the, uh, uh, the Abia, Abia review. So these guys, a collection of, you know, people of different works of life, you know, writing about arts and culture. But of course, there were people also going there and buying stuff. Why not? for decoration in their houses. I don't see the, the antagonism in it. So you might, the, the, in Kano, they should buy their stuff and be happy with it, hang it in their toilet, you know, shit on it, whatever. <laughs> that is not the point. The point is there, are, is there should be a reflection about what happens in society, you know. That is what is called culture. You might write about it, you might not write about it, but you have to reflect about it. And I think that's the point. And the people do it. Don't negate that, please. Um, my uh, name is BC uh, Silva, and uh, uh, um, I just wanted to maybe follow on from the lady that just spoke because I do feel a certain sense of disconnect. I think this is a very important um, panel, um, at least for me, because I'm focusing more on publishing, and it's such a huge problem um, on the ground. Um, a lot of the examples that we've had are coming out of Paris and um, Berlin, etc. But then, you know, and we need... And Johannesburg. And Johann Johannesburg, which, of course, is, is sort of also different when you think about the rest of the continent and the kind of infrastructure that's available um, within the country. Now, I'm trying to um, publish two different kinds of publications. One is a, a sort of comprehensive monograph on um, Okayo Jikiri, which is long overdue. And sure. um, my experiences over the last three years of trying to publish a work by what I thought, um, or person I thought was, a fairly well-established um, artist across the continent, but also internationally, um, everybody or most people should know about his hairstyles. And that's been one long... Um, complicated um, trajectory. I'm also trying to do some uh, monographs, po pocket monographs on younger artists who may not get the opportunity to show abroad but are doing some interesting works um, on the continent. 
and with the title being publishing, I thought that it would be extremely important for us to talk about the complete, well, not complete, almost complete lack of publications coming out of the continent. The few that do exist are um, published, written in the West, published in the West, not circulated at all in Africa. Um, in Nigeria, we have a, a situation where there are quite a few books that are being published, and the ones that are being published um, abroad by, um, I can't even remember the publishers, you can't get them. Extremely important books that you can't get to buy in Nigeria because publishers in the West believe there's no market in Africa, which is completely false. So, you know, I would have really appreciated it if all of you had touched upon this critical deficit that we have in Africa, getting monographs out, getting academic books out, getting coffee table books out about the, as Bonaventura says, you know, the masses, you know, of artists that are creating work. You know, you can start with short essays, you know, 500 words, a thousand words, you know, develop it to two, three, four, five thousand words. But, you know, I think for me, that is what is critical. And everything else that, you know, really has been said is a little bit, you know, navel gazing. Thank you. Yeah, I, I can touch on that. I've published a lot. I've, you know, we've published Art South Africa. South Africa yeah. was a different context. It, yeah, it is. Um, and even in that much more established market for publishing, it, it's difficult. Even in that established market, it's d difficult. So I can imagine how incredibly difficult it must then be for you. Um, I, I have, and I'm happy to give you some input on a couple of different models that we've developed, you know, for, for lower cost publishing. Um, but even though we now have partnered with Random House. Sorry, sorry, just to say, yeah. you know, it's great low cost publishing, but I want to do a fine art book on Ojikiri because he deserves it. And I'll get to and that too. Be, okay. Yeah. Um, and even with, with the Random House link up now, they. We want to do, you know, Africa-wide publishing, but the the kind of model that that's going to work is one where we'd look at different regions and putting them in compendium-type books, you know, looking at fifty artists or a hundred artists across the continent, and then working with really established critics and writers to give it a much bigger international appeal because we'd like to sell it abroad as much as we'd like to sell it locally. Um, in South Africa, you know, books like that would probably sell between 500 and 2,000 units at a, at a kind of a premium, premium price. But even for us to find you know, the distribution in other African countries, then we hit the wall as well. You know, we don't even have those solutions within the continent, because being in Cape Town and where you are, you could be anywhere in the world apart. So we, we really need to try and work with more of you guys to try and close that loop and for you to maybe assist us in your regions, and, and we literally have to build those networks and those distribution networks from, from a zero base. So, you know, there isn't, a, there isn't an easy solution. Um, but you can do really, really, really great, beautifully designed products at a low cost too. People buy that as well. And it's sometimes, you know, I, I would rather buy like a really funky, something that adds value, a publication that's written well, that's got something more to add than a big, Coffee table book. You know, people are pumping out lots of coffee table books. You know, I go to the the bookstores. I'm like, geez, which fuck, I'm out of here. I'm not, I can't even look. There's so much that's been done, and we've got unique and, and amazing content. South Africa. In South Africa, I would say, you know, if you look at the Stevenson Gallery, the Goodman Gallery, I would say that we're doing hundreds of books a year, hundreds. In one country on the continent. Exactly. I know, I know, but uh, that, uh, that's, that's our market talking to our market, you know, yeah, it's, it's, uh, we, 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 no, it's needs a way. Hi, my name is Yasmina, just uh, one question, do you distribute your books around uh, Africa, do you distribute them in Europe? 
or in America, no, outside Africa, or is it just yeah, uh, distributed I think in uh, most, most of the South African artists, and I'm sure some African artists and photographers too, you know, they work with Steidl and Thames and Hudson. They, they often co co publish with local publishers. So, you know, they, and they're pretty, they're pretty open to, to collaboration. So, there are European publishers that would, would look at those kinds of publications. So, there's no network of distribution, book distribution in, in uh, Africa, around Africa, between countries it's, of Africa. Uh, no? Sort of okay. Maybe yeah. take it in turns and not just, mm -hmm. just carry so, on private um, conversations. But to answer, to answer that, no, we, we, we don't. Okay. Um, yeah, but I, I, I think that uh, we, we, we we're dealing with two different issues. I think that the, the distribution, the, the publication in, in Africa uh, are linked with the education, are linked with a, a lot of things, like, uh, and it's a whole, it's a whole subject uh, to be addressed because it's not only, I mean, the, the top of the iceberg is the fact that you can't Published, but I know you. You will make that book. Uh, no, I know you. <laughs> but, uh, but 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 I mean, uh, the, the the very question is why. And I go back to to, to the Nigerian money going to the Tate again, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's not that there's no money in Africa. It's where does that money go, and how does the education system works? I mean, from the, the top to the bottom, how does it work at school? What is the, the, the level of awareness on the contemporary issues in the people who are supposed to, uh, to lead those countries and uh, the people who are the economical leaders, etc., etc.? And I think that this is a, <laughs> another debate. We cannot take publication in Africa just out of the pocket mm -hmm. because it's, it's so linked. With, it, it's a whole web. But uh, to answer the young lady over there, uh, Revenoir was distributed in every country in Africa. But we created a network. It's like when there was a bookstore, we would go to the bookstore and then we would sell the thing to the bookstore, mm -hmm. to that one bookstore. When there was a kind of a network. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I was carrying the things. And uh, in South Africa, they had a kind of a little southern network that we use, etc. But, uh, can, oh, oh, sorry, man. Can I just want to say one more thing about the, in South Africa, a lot of the, the publications are pegged on a big exhibition. So, you know, if you, if you were going to be launching that book, often the, the coffee table books in, in South Africa are launched on the back of a big, a big exhibition by an artist. And that would generally probably move about 500 units in the first, you know, the first six months from the time of the exhibition and post that. And, um, you know, if you're going to print abroad, then, then you, 300 to 500 units is, is, is feasible and doable as a model. Yeah. If I, if I may answer my dear friend, Busy, is also that I don't feel, and without being a specialist in publishing, I really believe that uh, publishing in general, be it in Africa, in very Europe, good. anywhere, is a very, very difficult, difficult business yes. nowadays. I mean, it's in total decline. Yes. It is a challenge for a lot of publishing houses even to survive. Many are closing and many, many are turning into kind of distribution yes. uh, uh, tools and in the, in the sense that you can the, the, the participate into your into your project if the project is fully funded. So as a as a as a curator and wanting to do a book uh, by uh, such a seminal artist, it may be interesting to combine it with an institution, to combine it with a show, and insist from the very beginning that part of the whole project is a publication. That's be. one of yeah. the ways that for us, at least at Raw Material Company, we, we manage to do publications, you know? I, I would but like to, 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 in trying to do a, a, just a publication on its own, it is very difficult. Mm -hmm. It's not only in Africa, it is everywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, I mean, I understand you know, what everybody's saying, but I think that what I'm interested in is us thinking about what oh, yes. kind of publishing strategy will be um, more appropriate for Africa. That's something that I'm thinking through because I have come up against everything you're talking about now. 
and I'm thinking, how can I think out of the box and be independent of publishers in the West? You know, I've had all the options, co-publish, publish with an, an exhibition. I don't feel I have to. If it's appropriate to publish with an exhibition, I will. But I'm very interested at what stage can we get to the place where we can um, have standalone publications. I'm very much interested in that. Mm -hmm. I go to the Tate Library and you look at all the monographs and you know now you probably see one or two on Africans, usually from South Africa or Malik Sidibe or Ella Natri, you know, five or six people. Mm -hmm. But you know, I want to go to the Tate and see, you know, a medium sized, you know, publication on Emeka Ogbo, yes. for example. Okay. We need to, just like with writing and art criticism, where we need to find a discourse that comes out of the local, mm -hmm. we need to find publishing models that mm -hmm. come out of the local. Mm -hmm. And as I finish now, I'll give you one example. There's a photographer in Nigeria who's printing beautiful books on his work. He's done two big ones. Um, I showed him in Dubai. I can't remember his name, sorry. My memory. <laughs> Ade, Ade, sorry Ade if you're here. Um, <laughs> and he's got these huge books, which he publishes himself. Mm -hmm. They cost about, is it 30 or 40,000 mm -hmm. euros each because they're published in Germany, not even Dubai. And you know, what does he do? He's, he publishes a thousand. When I spoke to him last time, in less than 12 months, he sold about 800. Mm -hmm. The costs Very are covered. Cool locally only, not even distributing outside of Nigeria. I can't speak for other countries, but I know in Nigeria there is a market. Mm, okay. you know. But then he's selling a lot of photography, that's why I can afford to do a book. Yeah, yeah, he's selling a lot of photography, and, and, he's and getting the banks on board, yeah. he's using his own money, yeah. he's that's, distributing that's, that's himself, that's yeah, he's finding a different yeah, model yeah, that is thing. independent of going to Thames and Hudson, sure, Prestel, yeah. Hans Katz and all these other people. I think, Missy, you're making a very important point, a very legitimate point, and it's, 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 it's wonderful. As Koyo said, and as you know, publishing everywhere is really, really difficult. So we have been fighting with that, even though I'm in the West. You know, when we started up with Savvy Contemporary, it, the, it, the core of the, of the art space was to do a, a publication for every exhibition we did. And we've been fighting with that, doing limited editions, doing self-publishing. Now we are redefining how to do publications by doing rezo prints, you know, going to the really cheap uh, uh, possibilities. But the, the matter of fact is we should write something and we should get it out there, exactly. you know. So the thing with the African uh, context is it's a change of perspective. I, I come again with the example of the Abia, you know, post-independence. A couple of people, intelligent, who valued culture, so we put our heads together. What can we do? And it was institutionalized. You know, were, it was the government giving money to be, uh, Dr. Bernard Fondon to publish this, this journal. That was long ago. Late 70s, the, there was a change in the cultural conception of, 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 of what the country could be. You know, so this funding dropped, the journal dropped as well. You know, so we have to see how to implicate the government into these things. I don't know how it works. I don't live on the continent. But I think that's a difficult issue. But I know in my case that um, I, I, I have the same difficulties in bringing out stuff to the public, you know. And I find the initiative of this, this, this Nigerian guy you talked about, this photographer, amazing. But he's, he's done, that is what Nobuyoshi Araki did in the 60s as well. He did his own books. You know, I, 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 so I think personal initiatives, they are very important, very important. Yes, everybody should go out and do a book. Yeah. 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 Yeah, where are we going that's, to um, that's probably a really good point, place to end the conversation. I'd like to thank um, all our speakers um, for starting what became an impassioned discussion here. Um, Thanks all for coming, and we welcome you next year. Uh, hopefully, it will be one, uh, 154 2014. So, thank you for coming to the forum. Thank you.